Well, hey, YouTube, Petey Two Finger. Um, excuse me. I, I'm not sure where I left off uh, talking about this the base preamp that I've been uh, working on for about a week now. Um, what what we the consensus was that the the distortion I didn't care for the distortion and I didn't care for the way that the uh, final gain stage was working. That final gain stage is uh, a Vero layout that I built. Uh, it's supposed to be a Yamaha NE1, which is like a parametric EQ gain stage. This pedal for the bass, secret weapon pedal. Anyway, either I had made some sort of a mistake, or it may have been the fact that I, I never I never had the proper capacitor. That's what I'm leaning towards. Either way, what I ended up uh, thinking through it, I thought, you know, gee, what I would really like to have is a two-knob EQ, like volume, bass, and trouble. Part of the thing with this uh, device is its chassis is only so wide. It's not a huge device and it's got uh, right now it's got six printed circuit or six uh, circuit boards and a, a battery pack in the inside of it. So there isn't really much room. So keeping it uh, as compact and uh, not a plethora of knobs, a two-band EQ is certainly attractive because do you really need a mid-range knob? Well, you could argue about that. But So what did I do? We got rid of the NE1 and I built a what's called a split and blend. Uh, and that, that splits the signal actively and then blends like, an, uh, like a mixer almost so what the split and blend enables you to do you can install it on a fuzz or distortion and then you can have a clean channel and blend in the amount of distortion that you would like so for a bass distortion a bass effect a lot of people like that they like having um, of this blend control where you can bleed in whatever amount of distorted signal but still maintain your clean bass signal and that's uh, obviously for to have the uh, the bass frequencies like a lot of times if you just click on a, a, a fuzz or a distortion the low end a lot of the bass goes away which causes a problem uh, I mean, you could e just as soon put an EQ after it and then put that in a, a switching loop. Um, for, the, for this I idea that I'm going for, it's my wife's outdoor bass rig. She very well may end up using this indoor as well to replace. She uses a Zoom B2. And she also has a Zoom B1, which is a newer model of the B2. They're both really good, but I, the compressor in there, you know, not that good. I, I can't hear it compressing like I want it to compress. You know, to me, a compressor is like, you can hear it compressing. When you, when you turn it all the way up, it's too much compression. So you've got to kind of set that maybe three quarters or so to get in the range where it's really doing its job but it's not obvious so that's kind of the psychology on why and how I mean it's just it's just me basically flexing like look I can build um, a number of circuits put them in a box with a single rechargeable lithium ion power supply and it sounds good that's kind of it's just kind of one of those things we didn't we didn't need it but uh, if if it if it ends up functioning well enough we will use it and that's the goal it's you know 
if I miss the mark on even one of these circuits, it's going to be like, I'm not, we're not going to use it. We're going to use the multi effects that we already have. But if I get it just right, so in that process of Goldilocksing this device, uh, there was a switch, bypass switch that was popping, pop, click, it was a loud noise that would happen. And that was for the overdrive, the Dodd 250. So we built this split and blend, which will be a single knob, which will replace a toggle. And you'll just turn it all the way to the left for clean bass. And then if you'd like to blend in some distorted bass, you'll turn that to the right. And that will give you however percent you want. So I'm, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, well, gee, uh, what if we were to try and go for two or three different flavors of overdrive and distortion utilizing the controls on the distortion itself and then a mod switch to change from clipping diodes to LEDs which opens it up gives it way less compression and a more tube-like type of overdrive uh, that's my, one of my favorite mods is a you, you take the 1N4148 clipping diodes out of a Dodd 250 overdrive preamp and, and in place of those you, you install the, uh, LEDs and with that if you set it at noon you'll get like a really uh much more subtle overdrive and it's really pick responsive in that it's clean unless you pick you dig in and pick hard and then there's just a little bit of grit and what that grit it sounds I love I love that tone I love that temper so we'll have to see I mean this is me speaking from experience with a six string guitar not with a bass so I don't know I I basically how it went was we removed the toggle switch. I built the circuit for the uh, split and blend and installed it. And then I uh, removed the clipping diodes from the DOT 250, wired in the mod switch to have the. Uh, we didn't use 1N4148, we used 1N4001 clipping diodes. They're silicon diode. And then, uh, and, you know, I just had some 1N60s germaniums come in. I'm just not I'm not interested in that because the um, the germanium diode has a really uh, quiet it's super quiet and if on the other end of that switch we have a LED which is super loud it's going to be two extremes so I'm kind of trying to go for it to uh, make sense and user uh, ease of operation you know. If it's for a live thing, I don't want to have a switch on it where, oh, that's 19 decibels quieter when I engage that switch. Let me go turn that knob, you know, way up or way down or remember. So all, all of this is like kind of trying to get it right. And like I said, I we, we built the, um, it wasn't a Barkus Berry, it was a Stingray. Uh, circuit a two-band EQ like what you would find in an active bass so it used a TLO 61 uh, op amp check chip which I is that a dual op amp I forget what the is that the JFET one I, for, I forget what it is so yeah that's what's going on with that I uh, we we any one is gone we put the stingray bass preamp in there the two-band EQ is in there on the final gain stage. We put the split and blend in there uh, to replace the toggle. And then I uh, went ahead and wired in the mod switch for the Dot 250 clipping section, which is a pair of 1N4001 silicon clippers with a pair of 3mm red LEDs. And then you know, basically, in order to fit all that in there, I had to move some stuff around. We had to lose one of the knobs. There was a uh, a mod that I had done on the flatline compressor 
to turn it from a two knob to a three knob. And you don't really need that three knob. People say they tend to leave it set dead center, which it's a 100K, 100K pot. And the resistor that it calls for is a 47K. Gee, that's awfully close to 50K, isn't it? So, yeah, that would mean a nooner, a switch that's you kind of always leave it set at noon. Well, get rid of it and put a resistor in. And then there you go. It gave me that extra slot to put the blend control in. And the toggle switch that was the bypass switch became the mod switch. So that's what we got going on. Uh, I, I, it's been busy. My daughter threw a gender reveal event at a, out, at a park, outdoor park, because of the lockdown and social distancing, we got together, uh, spread out. And so we did that yesterday, and, and like I said, I came home and I, I got jumped back in on it, and I finished it. It's, it's done, but I haven't put the batteries in, and I haven't tested it. And you know what? My hand is so numb from uh, pushing it, from working too much. I'm not. I didn't plug it in and test it. I had, I had to edit the video today. Uh, for my daughter's thing, we edited that, and then uh, I watched Fetters, and I went through and watched our concerts. I watched all of them in a row, and I have to say, I I enjoyed it. I really did. So, here's the deal. We're going to be working towards another concert real soon. Look for an upload, and eventually I'm going to you know, have that uh, bass preamp thing ready to show for you as well. So, we'll see you soon. Good thoughts, good words, good deeds, and peace.